Welcome back to another episode of The Road Chose Me. And on today's episode, I'm gonna talk all about the solar power setup that works really well for long-term overlanding. So I'll go over what I've got on my Jeep, I'll go over what I've learned from other people on the road, and then I'll talk about the kind of setup that you should think about having and what works really well. So if you've always wanted to know about solar powers for your overland vehicle, stick around, I'll get into it right now. When it comes to why would you even want solar panels, it was a big feature in overland vehicles in the 80s, and now I think it makes even more sense. Solar panels are cheaper than ever before, and we all have more electronics than ever before. Everyone's got cell phones and laptops and all kinds of things that we wanna charge, and most of us are running fridges. And my advice, if you've got a fridge, you really wanna think about a solar setup, because a fridge is such a constant draw and it's going to run your batteries down. And the solar panels are such a huge winner when you wanna stay in one place for a day or three. You don't have to start your engine to charge up your batteries, but your fridge is gonna stay cold. You can still charge your laptop and your cameras and all your gear. So for me, having solar panels just gives me that freedom where I don't have to run the engine very often, but I know I have plenty of electricity and I'm not gonna run out for the things I really need. In terms of how much solar you actually need, it's difficult to give blanket advice because everyone's gonna have different needs based on the size of their fridge, the things that they're charging, and then also depending on the size of the batteries that you have. It'll also depend on how often you plan on driving versus just staying in one place and relying on your solar panels. When I really looked into it, I only have a 35 litre fridge and probably a single 100 watt panel would be plenty enough for that but I also run a water pump and a UV lamp. I do use my laptop a lot and that's power hungry. I have a lot of cameras to charge. I have some interior lighting. All of those things added up to the point where I thought two 100 watt panels will fit, so why not go with 200 watts? From all the reading I've ever done, most overlanders, I would say, your needs fall between 100 watts and 200 watts unless you have an enormous truck camper and then you'll probably have more solar, but for most people, I would say that fits. Certainly, if you're trying to run a freezer or you have a really big fridge freezer, then you're gonna be 200 watts, maybe even a little bit higher. And if you wanna stay in base camp for maybe even weeks at a time, more solar is gonna be more useful than less solar. So to start out, let's cover what I've got mounted to the roof of my Jeep. And what I have here is a couple of 100 watt solid solar panels. And these are from Renergy Solar. And you can see these are permanently mounted to the roof. I did it myself, I'll go over why in a minute. And so they're actually a little bit wonky. This was done with whatever tools I could find while I was in Bumaco in Mali. And I really love having the solar panels mounted permanently on the roof. I think it's such a better solution than having the kind that kind of fold up and you have to bring them out every day. I saw many people on the road doing that and it's just something that I'm not interested in doing. So the beauty of having them always mounted like this, it means they're always connected and they're always making solar. Even right now, even parked in the shade, this is making solar and it's charging my batteries and running my fridge at this very moment. It also means if you stopped at a border crossing for a few hours, if you're buying gas, if you're just hiking to a waterfall, all of those times, your solar panels are actually working for you and they're making power. Whereas if you have fold away ones, they'll be stored somewhere in all your kit and they're not actually making power. It also means at the end of the day when all I really wanna do is relax, I just do exactly that. I don't have to drag panels out of the car. I don't have to go and prop them up in the sun and run cables. All of that stuff, it's just kind of like more burden on your trip. And yeah, if you're only going out on weekends, maybe foldable panels are right for you. But if you're going for a month, or certainly if you're going for years, I would never even consider them. Everyone that I've seen using panels like that, the cables end up getting damaged, all of the connectors wear out because you're plugging them and unplugging them every day. You wind up having to deal with frayed electrical connectors. On top of that, the panels are always gonna get dirty from being outside on the ground in the mud. Then you have to put them inside somewhere. They take up valuable space. They rattle around inside, they get damaged, they get scratched. And if you're out wild camping, do you really wanna leave them out overnight? 
Probably not. It's the kind of thing that might get stolen. So you're gonna to have to put them away at night. Then when you wake up in the morning, the sun's already up, but your solar panels are still folded away. So now you have to get up and put your solar panels out before you've even had your morning coffee. So for all of those reasons, having the fold away panels is kind of just like more of a burden and increases like the amount of stuff that you have to deal with and think about. My panels here, they've been mounted on the roof for almost five years and I just never think about them. They're always making power. I barely ever clean them off. Usually the rain does that enough and it just makes it so much simpler and easier. So from my perspective, having panels permanently mounted is really the best way to go. For me, with my 200 watts and my fixed panels, I can easily go permanently without ever driving the vehicle and run all of my electrical needs as long as the panels get about two or three hours of direct sun a day. So here I am parked in the deep shade. In the morning, it probably only gets about half an hour of direct sun. If I left it here like this and the fridge was running, probably after about three days, the fridge would turn off because the battery would go below the cutoff voltage. So one downside to having the fixed panels is that I do need to get some direct sun on those panels every day if I plan to stay still. So what I learned was it's really nice to park near some shade or near some trees, and it's fine to get sun on the vehicle all day long because it keeps the panels nice and charged and the battery full. And then if I want to sit in the shade, I can just move my chair sideways and be in the shade. So I guess that's one downside compared to having the panels that you can move around and follow the sun as it moves. I prefer to just leave the vehicle where it is for a whole day. When I was first designing this Jeep and I was trying to cut out weight wherever I could, I originally spec'd really thin, flexible panels to go on the roof here. And they were mounted at the start of the trip and actually they failed after about six months in Africa. And I bought them from Renergy Solar and they acknowledged they had a manufacturing defect with a batch and they actually sent out replacement panels to all of their customers who'd bought them. So really good customer service there. And they sent me these replacement fixed ones. Since then, Renergy have been hard at work and they've designed new flexible panels, which I'm really excited to try out. And I'm sure I'd look at for a future build because they're so much lighter and lower profile than these ones. If you're interested in a solar setup, I've got a discount code on the Renergy store. So check out the link down below in the description. That'll take you to the store. And then at checkout, if you put in the code TRCM, which is The Road Chose Me, you'll get a 10% discount on basically everything in the whole Renergy store. So check that out. They have really great panels and solar charge controllers. And obviously you can't have a discussion about solar panels without talking about your battery setup. Although in this case, I'm going to not have that discussion and I'll say that's a topic of a future video, my dual battery setup and how I've got all that wired together. For today, I'll just limit the discussion to the actual panels and the charge controller. So let's go inside the Jeep now and check out the charge controller. If you're wondering what a charge controller is, or why do we even need one? It's because you can't connect a solar panel directly to a battery. Just the way that voltages work out and charging, it's not gonna charge the battery correctly, and in fact, you can damage things. So you need this thing called a charge controller, which is like a little computer unit, and it kind of normalizes the voltages and the current, and it makes sure that the right amount of charge is going into the battery, but then it will stop charging the battery when necessary. So it's just a little electronic box, but you do have to have one. So don't ever connect a solar panel straight to your battery, always make sure you get a charge controller. Here's a quick little walk up just to show you where the charge controller actually is. Obviously this is the back of my Jeep here. Coming in, you can see it's that gray box mounted right there on the wall. And I'll show you now, I'll run through the features quickly and I'll show you how it works. So this is the Renergy charge controller I have. I'm sure by now they have newer models, but I'll run you through the features of mine and I'll show you what I really love about it. I also really love this green light. I can see this from the driver's seat and it shows me that the system is functioning and the solar panels are actually generating charge. It's just a nice overall indicator. Then if we go through the menus a little bit, this, if I had wired it up, would show me how much load is currently being taken out of the system. I can hear the fridge is running, so I know it is actually using power, but I never wired it up that way. 
Next screen along, we get the temperature of the unit, which is kind of nice to see because that defines how efficient it can all be. And state of charge there of the battery tells me that it's currently 95% full. Up the next screen, this is really nice. Current battery voltage is 12.8 volts and there's currently 0.8 of an amp going into the main battery. And then from the solar panels, we basically get the same reading. So the panels right now are making 12.8 volts at 0.8 of an amp. So what's that? Pretty close to 10 watts. And we are parked in the deep shade right now. Uh, if I go over to the sun, I can get that up well over 100 watts, especially when I'm pulling lots of power out of the system. So those are the two screens that I use the most to really monitor how things are going. But the next one works really well. I can see how much power I've made today. Yesterday, I made half a kilowatt hour. It was parked in the shade all day. And for all the time I've had this system, I've made 191 kilowatt hours. So that's free electricity right there. And then a couple of more menu screens just tell me that it's all running normally and all of that kind of stuff. So if you're a bit daunted about wiring up a charge controller, it's actually really simple. There are really only a few wires that you have to connect and it's not dangerous voltage. It's not going to hurt you. Over here on the bottom left, there's a little picture of a solar panel and these two wires just come directly from the solar panel straight into this unit. Over here is a little picture of a battery. And so these two wires are coming straight from my battery, positive and negative. And that's all you actually need to wire up and the system works just like that. There's also an extra connection here and this is where I would wire in the load. So I do actually have a fuse block that everything is wired through. And if I had connected it to here, we'd be able to see how much current is being taken out of the system. So as you can see, my system is really simple. And that's what I love most of all, is systems that are just simple and they work. I don't wanna have extra burden when I get to camp at the end of the day. I don't wanna worry about things getting stolen or having to put dirty solar panels inside the Jeep. Worst of all, I don't wanna to have to deal with broken connectors when I'm in the Congo or Sudan. So I don't want any of that extra hassle, which is why permanently mounted is my advice. So if you're looking to get some solar kit, I really recommend checking out Renergy. As I said, click the link in the description and then use checkout code TRCM, the road chose me, and that's gonna give you a 10% discount. So let me know if this has been helpful. Don't hesitate to ask if you'd like future videos on any topic. As always, please do hit thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you don't miss future videos. Until then, maybe I'll see you on the road.